Our second speaker in this is Deline Ray, who's the general manager of OBE Organic. Um, OBE Organic was a, among Australia's organic beef pioneers. Uh, it produced organic beef in the remarkable Channel Country for export to markets including Japan, the US, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia and the Middle East. Deline's the fourth generation of a family that has farmed in the region and has an intimate knowledge of the land and the people who make OBE Organics grass-fed beef a world beater. She's performed practically every role in the company, including a number of years overseeing production at the slaughterhouse. She now travels extensively throughout Asia, the Middle East and North America on behalf of OBE Organic, uh, valuing the personal and lasting relationships she has built with customers. So to hear uh, another perspective on the role of premium markets and where Australian agriculture might sit in premium markets, please join, join me in welcoming Deline Ray. Good morning. Good afternoon. Morning. Morning, everyone. Um, it's a great time to be in organics in Australia. You probably heard that demand is outstripping supply, the export market is buoyant, and livestock prices are very strong. So Ovi Organic, uh, a little bit different to the Batlow company that you've just heard about before. We're not a cooperative, we're a private company. We were founded by a group of graziers out in the Channel Country. Um, the best way to describe it is two days drive west of Brisbane. Um, and still owned by those original graziers as well as their extended families. We are one of the very few companies in the world producing halal certified organic beef. We supply customers in Australia, the Middle East, uh, North America and Asia. So we're part of a value chain that listens. What that means is that we facilitate a pretty unique process. Our value chain takes healthy plants and well cared for animals and turns them into something that consumers tell us they want. We are listening to consumers. We hear from consumers every day that they want meat produced from livestock that have been well cared for, that have had access to pasture, um, free from, uh, that has not been sprayed with chemicals, and, ha and those animals have never received growth promotants or antibiotics. That's what we hear consumers telling us that they want. So the t today the team at Obi Organic are not just producing certified organic beef, we're actually facilitating a connection between increasingly savvy consumers and experienced multi-generational farming families. Now this may seem like common sense. Everyone's smart in this room and you know that already. You may think I'm just playing on words here, spinning it. Meat is meat, right? Beef is beef, right? A cow is just a cow, right? A cow produces beef, right? Well, sort of. Our value chain takes healthy plants and well cared for animals and turns them into something that consumers tell us they want. Actually, there's a really big difference producing something we think high value export markets need as opposed to something we are sure a high value market wants. So we produce certified organic beef, but I'm going to throw up a sheep example here. So consider this. A sheep is just a sheep, right? Well, sort of. Just a few decades ago, sheep were grazed in Australia for wool, as still are, to produce anything from clothes to carpets. Now, we've got other natural or man-made fibres that perform better than wool in some applications. We've also got consumers with concerns about the husbandry of wool sheep breeds. Those farmers who were listening to the market back then 
started to invest in meat sheep breeds. Sheep graziers who have listened and adapted have benefited from new opportunities in the meat sheep market. Consider this. Paper is just paper, right? Well, sort of. <laughs> See where I'm going with this? Origami paper is used to fold origami. It's the art of paper folding. The only requirement of the folding medium is that it must be able to hold a crease. So we have something on the top left of both of those rectangles that starts as a square piece of paper but in the deft hands of an origami expert we can make either a wild duck or a scorpion uh, down the bottom there. Perhaps there are opportunities galore for those of us in this room really will willing to listen to consumers and turn paper into scorpions instead of ducks. And a word on labels and rhetoric in agriculture in Australia. You may have heard that organic beef is just natural beef, right? Well, sort of. Australia's beef is clean and, and safe anyway, right? Yeah, sort of. Investing in certifications like EU and organic just so that we can provide the certifications our customers want is a bit of a waste of money, isn't it? Let's consider the wallabies narrow loss to New Zealand over the weekend. I don't know if you guys agree with me and ladies, um, the wallabies appear to be a different team under the guardianship of new coach Michael Checker. Do you think subtle changes in the coach's rhetoric have turned the wallabies around? Now, Wikipedia tells us that rhetoric is the art of discourse, an art that aims to improve the capabilities of writers or speakers to inform, persuade, or motivate particular audiences in specific situations. In sports, I had to look this up. Um, because I'm not really into sports myself, but Wikipedia tells me that in sports, a starting lineup is an official list of the set of players who will actively participate in the event when the game begins. The players in the starting lineup are commonly referred to as starters, whereas the others are substitutes or bench players. Wikipedia goes on to explain that the starters are commonly the best players in the team at their respective positions. Consequently, there is often a bit of prestige that is associated with being a starter. Equally, there is often negativity associated with starting on the bench. Now I understand, under new coach Michael Checker, the substitutes or bench players are now referred to as finishers. In an article which appeared on rugby.com.au on the 10th of August 2015, Michael Checker is quoted as follows. We just want to finalise a few things and get our bench organised because I think the finishes in this game are going to be really important. Could Michael Checker have revitalised a team just by labelling his players differently? Could he, just, could he have empowered the non-starters by calling them finishers instead of substitutes? Could we do the same for some underperforming, aspect, uh, underperforming parts of the ag industry in Australia? Could investing in additional certifications like EU or organic allow us to label our meat, dairy or grains differently? And could this achieve a better outcome for our industry? Today, OB Organic is facilitating the mechanics of a value chain that delivers safe food to families of the world in the form of certified organic beef. Our product is being shipped by air and sea 
to high-value destinations like Dubai, New York and Hong Kong. So what does it take for us to be successful in these markets? Uh, three, three points here that I've come up with. So we listen via a sophisticated social communications platform. Social communications in part is part of OB Organic's DNA. We facilitate communication between our producers and consumers of their organic beef. And we really welcome collaboration for improved industry outcomes. We, we encourage benchmarking and always try to engage with and champion the innovators of our industry. So why listen via social media? Over the past two years, we have developed a presence on a number of social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn and YouTube, to name a few. We have an audience who have connected with us on these platforms over time. We have developed a relationship with our audience. This relationship has provided us many, many opportunities to listen. We can, we can now independently canvas new or existing markets and verify information received from well-meaning third parties. We have literally thousands of eyes on the ground. This is quite useful when our product is in New York and we are out in Thargaminda, Charleville or Birdsville. These thousands of eyes and ears help us to understand what is going right. And sometimes we might even call on them to ask them what we can do better. And this happens in real time. So you can listen on social media. Why should we communicate on social media? We've tried to be proactive in reaching out to consumers in our markets around the world. By doing so, we've developed relationships with them. We've learnt that there is real value in making the effort to have a conversation with your end customer. We understand that we can influence buyer behaviour other than just at the checkout with a discount voucher. We are a small, agile team at OBI. So Andrew and um, Sam are 20% of our team. That means we've constantly got team members on the go, whether that be liaising with producers out west of Roma or meeting customers in Taiwan. We communicate our movements a lot on social, all the time. Our team keep up to date with each other by following our social communications. It's actually very important for our customers to connect with us socially. It's actually just as important for our customers to connect with us socially and verify us as an authentic Australian company producing safe food as it is for our team to know when one of our directors, farmers or customers are visiting Brisbane. So here's an example uh, top right of David Brook who's our chairman. Um, just letting everyone know that he's looking forward to catching up with our team at the Oberganic office tomorrow. So customers find out our director's flying from Birdsville to Brisbane. Our team find out he's coming in, our supply chain partners, bankers, anyone that wants to catch up with him in Brisbane will be able to reach out with him because he's put it up on Twitter. And it's also extremely powerful him uh, tagging junior team members and senior team members. We even have a social media visualiser in our office which provides a live feed to our team of all the conversations happening about OB Organic in real time anywhere in the world. So I challenge Mick at the next AFA, where are you Mick? <laughs> to have a social media visualiser um, visualising all the AFI conference hashtags. Um, what that is top left of that photo, is a, um, it's a touch screen on the wall and it just throws up, it captures conversations about our handle, hashtags that we're interested in, things like that. So when people are walking around the office, having a cup of tea, going back to their desk, going to the water cooler, going to the toilet, they'll come back and they'll, it's just throwing up in real time what's going on. So there's no doubt there's people, our team, small team in Brisbane uh, following this conversation uh, by following the, the hashtag. 
So we're not just uh, oh. we're not just listening and facilitating conversations between consumers and producers on social media. We've got other social KPIs too. Um, so I've put some up here. I'm not going to give you all our company secrets, but I've, I've put a few easy ones up there. So our social KPIs include, but are not limited to, building corporate reputation, consumer influence, brand development, influencing capability, and building talent supply. So they're self-explanatory, but I should point to the last one there, which is build talent supply. Gosh, using social media to build talent supply. Um, the comms people in the room will know what I'm talking about here. Um, collaborate. So how we're going to do that is collaborate socially with universities, educational institutions and rural recruitment firms on social. And we're going to measure it by the number of random job applications and inquiries sent to careers at obiorganic.com. Um, I, I get so many, I probably get two, two emails a week from pretty high profile people in the industry wanting to come and work for us. So that's pretty exciting. So just last week I got um, an email from someone that said, I view the company as innovative, forward-thinking, and to be engaging in much-needed grazing initiatives both here and overseas. So it's working. Why do we seek out collaborations and champion the innovators? Last week I was in Rockhampton. I was excited to participate in the launch of the latest Future Inc. thought leadership paper titled Food Farming and Our Future. It's by Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand's it's their thought leadership initiative which contributes to macroeconomic discussions and public policy making. In that paper I learned of the difference between the key priority areas for New Zealand and Australian agriculture. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to have a look at this. It's pretty profound. So we always try to engage with and champion the innovators. So in this example, I ask you, what do you think Obi who do you think Obi Organic should be modelling itself on? The left or the right? So the, the New Zealand one says, uh, figure seven is the one on the left, New Zealand industry leaders key priorities, June 2015. And this is Australian Ag's five priority areas. You're right. <laughs> We're modelling ourselves on the innovators, which in this example is currently New Zealand. We've embraced their number one priority and recently announced a formal partnership with the Livestock Biosecurity Network to help cattle producers better manage biosecurity risks and as such protect and grow valuable markets. The Livestock Biosecurity Network and Ovi Organic will also collaboratively promote biosecurity preparedness across the beef sector to raise awareness of the importance of reducing the risk of pest and disease outbreaks. Please join our conversation and discuss biosecurity in your boardrooms and in the field. Biosecurity is Australia's competitive advantage and it really matters. Thank you, Mick Keo, for the invitation to speak about the journey that Obi Organic has been on over the last 20 years. Our value chain is now positioned to deliver on our mission of providing safe food for families of the world. I encourage each and every one of you in this room to go back to your teams and empower them to succeed in premium markets by figuring out whether to turn paper into scorpions or wild ducks. Thank you.